This is peony painting in real time. If you want it really slowed down and step by step, let's get started. All right, if you're a diehard watcher of Joe McKenzie YouTube channel, then you know that um, this one is for you. This is not going to go by quickly. This is twice as fast as I paint. And unfortunately, I'm using a new camera, so I've uh, made this less uh, tutorial in two sections, kind of my first, first approach and then my second. And as you can see, it's a little bit out of focus. The second section is in focus, and I need to play with the camera to see why that is the case. But that's not going to matter for the tutorial. As a matter of fact, this is, gives us an opportunity to see what it looks like when you squint. The camera is doing it for us, and squinting is really important in the process here. So I start by making those columns of light, medium, and dark. And I've watered down a cerulean blue, a permanent rose, and Naples yellow. Those are going to be my darks. I'm putting my finger wherever I see the darkest elements. I'm using a flat brush and I'm using all three colors to make the dark shapes that I see. So there's cerulean blue, a little bit of rose, and then a plop a little bit of that um, Naples yellow in. Because those are opposites on the color wheel, it will create a gray to your eye, but it is not a mix of a gray. It's those three colors. So I'm doing some triad work here. I'm working wet paint into wet paint. So those were the darks that I found. And then I could see that something went even darker. That's where my finger is right now. So I found it. I mixed a dark. The dark would have been cerulean blue. No, actually, I think there's some ultramarine blue in that. And again, that permanent rose. Now, these are not going to be my darkest darks when I'm all finished but I need to establish where they are. So those are what you see as the dark shadows on the peony, on the white peony. And I'm plugging those in, in pretty broad strokes, because I don't want to get precious here. And I'm thinking that in my head. Don't get precious and trust the process. So anywhere that I see something that's dark, I'm using that triad only now it includes a little bit of ultramarine blue in it. And the reason for the ultramarine blue is because ultramarine blue is darker than cerulean. So I'm working around the form. I'm squinting and only looking at where it appears to be darker. Surprisingly, it happens at, on the ends of many of the petals and it also happens where a shadow is cast. Now I'm going for what I want the medium value to be, and it is that red plop of color in the middle of the peony. That is just pure permanent rose. I'm squinting and looking at the shape. I'm going to adjust all this later, but right now I see darks, mediums, and lights, and I'm leaving the white of the paper white. Although there are very few whites in the actual peony, still using the big brush, which is probably a size but it's a size 10 flat. No, it's not a 10. It's got to be a 12. Use the value finder just for a second, just to make sure that my mediums, my medium tones, do read as being medium in the middle. That value finder helps me. What I've done is I've mixed up a neutral that leans toward yellow. It has a little bit of orange in it. It also has a little bit of that Naples yellow in it probably a touch of cerulean blue. What I'm doing again is creating a lighter yellow-gray, because that's what I see. That's, and I know that if it's yellow-gray, where it goes very deep into the petals, I know it gets darker in there, but I want it to be warmer, because you can see that it's yellow. So I think to myself, what do I need to do? And self said, you need to create a warmer gray that's lighter than the darks that you've already put in. So that's what that middle column is all about. Now, I'm, now I've mixed up a cooler gray because I want to go in again where my finger is. It has to be lighter than what I've put in already. It's just slightly lighter. It's quite subtle. 
But if I squint, I can see that that middle column is the, the correct value. It's darker than my lights, and it's lighter than my darks. And that's the confusing part, I think, because everything is relative. And I'm just, I shouldn't say just, I mean, it takes a lot of practice to do this, but the point of it is that I am creating, not I'm creating, what I'm doing is I am looking at value shapes, starting with my darks. Once my darks were finished, I moved into my midtones, and all I'm doing is establishing and saying, okay, if, the, if I have a midtone, is it cool? If it's cool, then it tilts toward blue or violet. If it's mid-tone but it's warm, then it's going to tilt toward yellow. I need that variation. Now, because my head is starting to get lost in too many shapes and they're not reading to me, I need to put in the background. Now, I know from the photograph that the background is the darkest of all of everything that's happening in this, in this particular photograph. But so I can put in, I'm going to use cerulean blue, a little bit of a uh, what was it, Hansa Yellow. This is triad work because I'm also going to plug in, and you'll see in a second, I think I drop in a little bit of a permanent rose in. There we go. Just to be consistent with colors I've already used. So my value dab side card is starting to get pretty filled up. See, once I put that background in, you can see that it's starting to shift a little bit. You can see that the form is starting to turn a little bit. Before I put that dark background in, it was looking particularly flat, and I was losing myself. So it is around here that I go away, clear my head. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Uh, the reason I say I couldn't resist is, you know, there's always this one point part in anything that you paint, which is, you know, what John Singer Sargent called the effect, kind of the thing that draws you to the painting. And I think in this case, of course, it's the petals and the background and all that, but ultimately it's that um, really exciting and unexpected rose that happens in the peony that I'm most interested in. Oh, thank you. Now we can stop squinting. But remember, when I'm painting, I am squinting. I am looking at things exactly the way that fuzzy, the fuzziness of that first uh, part of the clip was. Now I've gone away and I've, come, I come, I've dried it with a hairdryer. I come back, take a deep breath because I like what I have so far. And I've left some of the white to the paper white, but it's still a little bit too flat. So now I picked up a round brush, but it's a round brush number 12. I'm not going to pick up any small brush. Small brush is going to just be the death of me. It's going to make me see petal by petal. I don't want to see petal by petal. I want to see shape by shape. I want to see value in shape. So now I'm going back in where I started at the very beginning, finding those darks right where my finger is. And I've got cerulean blue, a little bit of that permanent rose, and... I think I've dropped the Naples yellow in this case. Yeah, I don't have a Naples yellow going on here because I do want these darks that I see to be dark. Relatively dark to everything that I put in this before. So there's the rose. I think there, I think I, I think there's some ultramarine blue in that. I think I dropped the cerulean because I knew that these were going to be dark spots. Not spark, I shouldn't say spots. These are areas, shapes. There we go. That's a pretty definitive shape. That's a rose and a, oh no, that's cerulean blue going in there. So I haven't gone there. But what I've done is, rather than shift my blue, what I've done is I have made it a thicker consistency. So it's about the consistency of gravy now. Whereas before it was a little bit watery until I could establish what I was doing. There we go. These are all the same shapes that I found at the beginning. So this isn't hard work on my brain. This is where it starts to get tricky. Let's see. Yeah. It's, okay. I'm trying to remember what I did here. All right, I'm finding every possible dark. And I could tell that I was right on the cusp of probably losing this painting. And by losing, I mean that it was going to be, it was going to read as flat. And so I thought, okay, 
Now comes the hard part. This is the part where the whites of the paper, there are too many whites. Because if I squint, I really only see very few whites left. So I need to take care of that. So I'm going back in and reinforcing the relationship that I had of those warm darks that were in there. And that's with a little bit of, that's again, the orange and a little bit of cerulean and a tiny, tiny bit of something else. Oh, there has to be some, I think everything has a little bit of that permanent rose in it to be consistent. Anytime that I'm mixing a neutral, I'm going to use the three primaries to do it. I need a red, a yellow, and blue. Here I'm chickening out. I know what I need to do, but I'm scared. So I, so I thought, let's darken the background. That's a safe thing to do. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm such a chicken. Because I, I do. I've had, I have had too many peony paintings where they start, if, if I work on, if I don't, this is what I should say, it's not the amount of time that I spent on, spend on them, but if I make the wrong value choice at this point when it comes to the whites of the paper, what will happen is I'll start to, the, the painting will start to become rigid and almost look like it's made out of concrete rather than looking that, like it has the soft form of petals. And I, I know it's so easy for that to happen because there's very little painting to be done that's left, but I better do it right. So I chickened out and, and I knew I had to go back in on the background anyway. It's not that this wasn't going to happen, but um, I'm delaying. <laughs> this is, this is my, oh gosh, we've all been there, right? You're just, you, you know, you, you know, you spend a certain amount of time on something and you think, oh, I'm not, I don't know if I'm ready to do this now. So what's surprising here is, is really that this is, this is really a painting of a of um, a white thing, but I'm, I'm, okay, here we go. So now I'm looking really carefully. This is the part where I'm kind of holding my breath and realizing, okay, this really matters. I'm even putting my finger on the places that are not white. I thought they were white. Originally they were white to my eye, but the more you paint something, the more you tend to see. And I realized that there were very few pure whites left in the peony, very few, especially when it came to um, anything that isn't in direct sunlight. If it's not a white thing in direct sunlight, then although it's white, I have to tamp it down a little bit. It can't be as white as the white of the paper. Otherwise, the form won't look like it's turned. And I do have a video about that. I think it's called When White is Not White. And it's a phenomenon that happens where something is white. I mean, we know it's white. The local color is white. But if it's white in the sunlight, direct sunlight, it's going to be a different value than white in the shade. And that's just the way it is. And that's when it gets really tricky to look at something because your mind is telling you that it's white, but your brain says, yeah, it's white, but it's not as white as direct sunlight. And you have to figure out where is that direct sunlight hitting. And I don't use frisket or whiteout some people do that, and I could have done that in order to preserve those whites, but I didn't because I know myself well enough and know that I hate the way it looks when I pull that stuff off. So around now, I know I've pretty much accounted for everything, and when I'm on top of something like this, it doesn't look like it's round, and it probably doesn't look like it's round to you now, but we're going to pull back in a minute, and it will look round. Let's see what happens now because I can't remember. I must have seen something that looked darker that I needed to adjust. No, that was tentative. I'm not so sure what that was. Let's see. Oh, okay. Time for the background again. That background is super important because it, if it's dark, you know, a dark background is going to make your white form come forward. So I'm putting, and now I'm back to the effect. This was, this was done I don't want to say done slowly. This was done after looking at it for a very, very, very long time. That finally I can get to the place where I'm starting to see, like hyper see. And so although that rose spot at the middle of the peony looked like it was one color, by now I'm starting to see color within color. And now we're right back to where I started at the very beginning. I'm reinforcing those beginning decisions of what were my darkest darks. I've gone over these areas now this is the third time that I've gone into these exact same shapes to make them darker. But if I had started with this amount of darkness going in at the very, very beginning, there would have been no way for me to sneak up on the subtle 
differences of the white neutrals that ended up being the midtones of this painting. Because remember, there's no white painting or no tints going on. I used triad work in order to make neutrals that read as midtones. And you know, <laughs> and you, you know, if you want to know more about how to do that and then draw, as I call it, drive the color wheel, um, you know, we could talk about that in a free 20 minute consult, which I'm, I'm offering at joemckenzie.com. Uh, it's exciting to meet some people and we're starting to have some conversations and work on some, some longer term projects with people. But driving the color wheel is super important because it's going to allow you not to make haphazard decisions, but to make decisions that are based on color theory. And that's really what's happening. That's what I realize is happening in, a, in my peony for the most part. Now, this is many, many years of painting peonies. And when I began painting peonies, and what many people do is they, just, is they, they um, paint the edges. And I do, I do the opposite. I paint the shapes, not the edges. Now, at the end of the painting, your palette should look something like this. I've cleaned it off once after that first phase, and then I've come back in, and this is the second phase. But it needs to look clean like that. It needs to not have anything gray on it. Any gray that appears should happen from doing your wet into wet work on your peony. Now, we pull back. By pulling back, you can see that the form is rounded. When you're right on top of it, it just doesn't look like that. So, you know, it's, so that's why I wanted to pull back because we're going to go in really close in a minute, but it definitely does fulfill the brief of turning into a fluffy round form. You can see all the colored abs and you can see the original photograph. Let's go in a little bit closer. It starts to flatten out a little bit when you come in a little bit closer. But it is a, but is a, it is a white form, which was my goal. And in a minute, we're going to go in really close and look at some of that triad work. And so it's really important to walk away from your work somewhat frequently if you want to achieve a roundness, because when you're right on top of it. And that's why I like to work on an easel. I, I don't know that I could paint this on, on a flat surface, because you need to walk away. All right, there we are, really, really, really close. You can see that those are grays, but there's no gray being used. There's warm gray, meaning a gray made that tilts more toward yellow. Then there's a cool gray which is a gray that tilts more toward violet. But if I squint, that violet gray is just, is it the, it's, it's virtually the same. What's really happening here, and if I went back to that mid, middle column and looked at my uh, value dabs, I've got a cool gray and a warm gray, which are the exact same value. What's actually tipping this form, yeah, it's value for sure. I mean, I, I'd be lying if it wasn't value. But beyond that, in order to tip it so that it still is soft and, oh, I don't know, feeling fluffy-like, temperature was really important here. And that's taken me a long time to understand that temperature can turn a form. It won't turn a form if your other values are wrong, but that was the, the careful work that I had to do when I could after a while, sort of hyper see and could see that my whitest whites were very few. And you can see close up here, there are very few white whites there. And instead, what I did was I said, okay, where I see white, if it's not in direct sunlight, is it a cooler white? Does it look, is it more toward violet? Then I'm going to plug that in. Is it a warmer white, more toward yellow? Then I'm going to plug that in as my neutral. And that's what ends up making the peony uh, turn around. Now, it's, this is true with a, it's, I guess it's true with everything, but it's especially true with a white peony. So it's really important to know how to mix your neutrals. The other thing that is really important in any painting, of course, is if, if I had made everything color, and I've done paintings where everything is color, then nothing reads as color. So it's nice to have a balance of both color, which is you have that rose there in the middle of the peony, you have the uh, violet to the left. Really important to have color, but then to have neutrals because the neutrals make the color seem more intense than it actually is. So remember to keep the whites your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. Oh, there's one other thing I wanted to say if you're still with me, which is when you do paint with me, I'm not gonna teach, I don't, teach how to paint a peony. 
I would say I, would te I teach how to see things differently. And so um, you're not going to see a tutorial or be satisfied with a tutorial where uh, you sit down with me and we paint the exact same thing the, at the exact same time and we come out with the exact same results. I just don't think that that is the kind of painting that allows you to then go to your next task and paint successfully because you really only learn to paint that specific thing. What I like to do is teach how to see things differently so then when you go to your next task, you're not looking at it as a thing, you're looking at it as an assembly of darks, mediums, and lights. And if you can make an assembly of dark, medium, and light colors, then you can plug those into your form and end up with a successful painting. So now I'll say, remember to keep the white, your paper white, your paint's wet, mass for value, mix for color. If you've watched for this, this long, um, it's a, a darn miracle. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.